here today with Virginia Pastrell, The Power of Glamour. She's here to talk with us about her book. Thanks for joining us today. Great to be with you. When I talk about my first exposure to glamour, I think about growing up in the 1960s during the height of the space race. And I think of a book I read in kindergarten called You Will Go to the Moon. And to me, as a little kid, that was glamorous. And that's not, of course, what people think of as, as glamour. But what I'm getting at in the book is that glamour takes a lot of different forms depending on the audience. And how did you select this photograph for the book? Because it's just perfect. Well, what I really like about this photograph, which originally ran in Harper's Bazaar, is that it, it's timeless. Glamour is like humor. It takes a lot of different forms. Yeah, well just the way humor gives us a specific emotion, glamour gives us a specific emotion, but it's a very different emotion. It's this sense of projection and longing. If only. If only I could be at that resort. If only I could be that woman or be right. And be that woman or be with that woman. Uh, if only I could live in that house. Uh, if only I could you know, go on vacation to that resort or have that job. You know, the earliest use of the word glamour, uh, one of the earliest uses of the word glamour as we use it today, was a phrase, the glamour of battle. And actually military glamour, and you're sort of getting at that with the gladiator, but military glamour is one of the oldest forms. So Michaela de Prince uh, was born in Sierra Leone, and when she was four years old, she was living in an orphanage because her father had been murdered during the Civil War and her mother had starved to death. And one day, a Western dance magazine blew against the fence at the orphanage and on the cover was a beautiful ballerina. And she saw it and she just wanted to be that person. A couple from New Jersey came and they came actually to adopt another little girl, but they ended up adopting them both. And she's now a professional ballerina. And my first book had a lot about technological innovation in it. Uh, my second book had a lot about style, um, which is different from glamour, but also important. So I'm interested in this, this whole idea of, you know, how do we move forward as individuals or as a society? But does, it t does one need a lot of cash to be glamorous? I mean, can you be glamorous without the wealth? Wealthy people can be glamorous, but certainly it's not the only form of glamour and, you know, glamour it comes from the audience. It comes from what the audience is longing for. So, what aspects of your career are you most proud of? <laughs> I mean, this. Yes, right. <laughs> well, I am star. very, I am very proud of this book. Yes. Actually, I, it was quite, you know, it was quite an undertaking. Nobody's done anything like it. How um, long did it take? From it, 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 it took five years. I mean, I wasn't, it wasn't the only thing I was doing during that period. I hasten to say, um, but it did take a long time. Whereas my other two books took about a year and a half each. Um, well, so. what I really want people to get out of this book and out of my other books as well is I want them to think about the world differently. When you read this book, it gives you a way of thinking about glamour that opens your mind, helps you appreciate it more, helps you enjoy it, I, I hope it's fun, uh, but it really gives you a kind of structure for thinking and then you start to see the world with new eyes. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you here today that you've taken time out of your busy schedule to join us and share the highlights from the book. I'm looking forward to, to reading it and look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank Thanks you. so much for coming Thank by. You.